Happy summer solstice, everyone. Welcome to Nighttime Astro Live. I'm Shannon Lemaire, your host, owner and operator of Lunar Ladies. Welcome, welcome to uh, Nighttime Astro Live, where we're tuning into the stars, we're looking at astrology, we're finding out what's going on, we're downloading the wisdom, and we're taking it into the astral plane for optimum growth and uh, personal development, right? For our soul's journey here on planet Earth. We'll see how long I last tonight. It is hot here in Alabama. <laughs> it is probably about 85 in the house. It's about 95 outside still at seven o'clock. Like, hello. But it might be 90 now. I could be exaggerating just a bit, but <laughs> I have made myself a muddled, I don't know if you can see it, muddled lime club soda virgin mojito for tonight. Um, a wonderful, refreshing drink with no alcohol, so um, you can maintain your space. <laughs> All right, so what, what time is it? What day is it? It is summer solstice, and we're going to talk about what that is and what that means um, astrologically. What does it mean to the earth? I got some pictures to show you. I'm so excited. But uh, summer solstice is happens when the sun, our sun, our beautiful life giver, um, fireball of consciousness, a light codes in the sky, reaches the Tropic of Cancer here in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, if you're watching and you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're having the sun in the Tropic of Capricorn. And I'm going to show you a really cool map that shows you the path of the sun um, onto the earth that's tilted 23.5 degrees. And that helps us with uh, our lunar cycles or that creates um, seasons, weather, that tilt. But what happens on summer solstice is the sun changes astrological signs to the sign of cancer. Cancer is a cardinal sign like Aries and Aries is the spring equinox. The next cardinal sign is Libra, fall equinox, and then followed by Capricorn, winter solstice. And again, that's here in the Northern Hemisphere. It's flipped in the Southern, where today is uh, winter solstice, and then they'll move into spring equinox, then they'll have their summer solstice, and then they'll have their fall equinox. So we just kind of reversing, making that beautiful figure eight together. So, the uh, tarot card for summer solstice is, you guessed it, sun card, right? Happiness, joy here in the Northern Hemisphere. We're going to have flowers blooming, gardens growing. We're getting ready for the harvest that starts to take place on uh, Lugudnatsa um, and the fall equinox, moving into uh, Samhain, Halloween. So, but now we celebrate the return Actually, the return of the sun happens winter solstice, but this is the high point where the sun's at its zenith. And no wonder here in the Bay Area, it's having a heat wave. <laughs> but it brings joy. It brings our childhood energy out. It grows flowers. We worship the sun. Uh, but in Celtic and other pagan traditions, this is the time of Letha. Letha. And uh, my Druid teacher was telling me that uh, three days post solstice is the, you know, the, the growth time, kind of everything stands still, where summer solstice is the longest day of the year. Hey, Nancy, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thanks for being here. Hi, goddess to you. We're celebrating Letha. Isn't it exciting? And Letha is uh, about fertility. She's the pregnant goddess, impregnated by the Oak King, right? And we're going to see in the charts, I'm going to show you two charts, uh, but the first, uh, the summer solstice chart has a big resounding hello from the lover's card. The lover's card, yes, the lover's card and the two of cups. They are in play now. So we have now through the uh, fall equinox, which is September 22nd, we're in an activation cycle uh, with that sun, uh, cardinal water, our emotions and our you know, love springs from our emotional body. 
And we have the lover's card uh, appearing in the moon's degree at summer solstice, and then brings in the lover's, uh, the two of cups. And so we'll talk about what that means. Uh, so Lipa, the, the goddess of fertility, this is midsummer's night, uh, three days post the solstice, whether it's winter solstice, we get uh, what Christians celebrate as uh, uh, Christmas. And here we celebrate that Letha fertility power um, uh, energy on June 24th. Now, June 24th is also uh, the parade of the planets. It's going to be most like really seen at a powerful level. Happens to also be my birthday. Yay! <laughs> So, uh, so take a look at my super, super birthday sale. I have three on-demand courses, uh, normally $444 or on sale for 99. So uh, get it while it lasts. It's gonna be through the weekend and on my birthday, you can uh, take advantage starting today. Nancy, I swear I'm starting to think the lovers thing is not going to happen for me. Hmm, well, Nancy, pay close attention to the summer solstice reading. I think we can redefine what lovers means and then see how that shifts the energy. Just saying, because I've been getting this big um, nod or, you know, intuitive hit from Venus, um, who's the goddess of love, when she enters Gemini, um, which will be on right around, I think on my birthday on June 24th. She, uh, I keep feeling this energy of bringing a twin, like a twin, a soulmate, a partner, partnering. And so now what summer solstice I feel when we look at the chart is really helping us redefine what love is, what partnership is, what lovers are. Like, what does this mean as we move into the age of gold, right? The, the fifth dimension, the Aquarius age, the, the age of gold. Uh, we have to upgrade our understanding because some of the what we've been taught has been uh, filled with all of this control, conditioning, and it is this, and we're moving away from that group think around that Piscean age version of love and lovers and partnering, and we're moving into more an Aquarius uh, understanding or version of the lovers card right, or, and the two of cups, okay. So we do have the angel, and who's the angel but Raphael? Healing, right? We've got, it looks like Adam and Eve, right? Bringing together six, and we are in the year of a six, which is the year of the lovers, the teacher, the healer, and the guide. So I feel like Venus moving into Gemini is a really powerful time. I'll probably do a reading on that a nighttime astral live because it just keeps like knocking me in the head. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I need to learn about this personally, as well as um, to share in community. Okay. So let's jump in. At first, I want to um, show you a picture that explains the, the impulse energy. And I want us to tune into the impulse frequency of the sun um, as we experience it body, mind, soul, spirit. Hi, Iveta. Welcome, beautiful. She's going to be tuning herself up here. Congratulations on getting the course. Very excited for you. Okay, I want to sh show you this picture. Now, it's an old picture. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So, it is an old map, of course, you know, looking at the world um, as a flat map. And what I'm focusing on here is this red line that's called a sine wave moving from here in the east. This is Aries. And when we have the sun in Aries, we call it spring equinox, which is balance. It's on the midline. And so the sun moves from spring, moves into Taurus, uh, you know, coming into Gemini, and then it hits what's called the Tropic of Cancer, this orange line going from here to here. So the sun only on the earth, we're only able to capture 
the bandwidth of light from the Tropic of Cancer to the Tropic of Capricorn. The sun doesn't shine the way it does here in the middle of the planet due to the tilting of the earth. So when the sun in the Northern hemisphere hits the Tropic of Cancer, that is what we call its most zenith point of the sun, summer solstice. So it's brought all the energy from spring equinox and brought it to the top, like a full moon. If we looked at the new moon in Aries, like a new moon, right? Up here is the full moon, like it's zenith. It's at the top, right? And it's coming right into the Tropic of Cancer. Sun is in Cancer, we say summer solstice. Now, notice if you're living down below in the Southern Hemisphere, the sun would be furthest away from the Tropic of Capricorn. So they call this winter, the sun's so far away, it's cold. But here in the North, the sun's so close, it's hot. And we're having heat waves all across America. All right, so then after summer solstice, the sun keeps moving, but it's gonna go lower lower like through leo virgo and then it's going to hit libra back to the zen the the equal point the equinox back to the line and it's going to go under the line and go towards the southern hemisphere and hit the tropic of capricorn where we're going to say that's winter solstice our friends in the south will say that's summer solstice and then it travels back up from capricorn to aquarius and Pisces back to Aries when we have a new year. So this is what's called a sine wave, S-I-N-E. It's a magnetic pulse that comes through every year when the sun crosses the equinox, the, equi the equator, Aries and Libra. So at Aries for us in the north, that's when we signal, hey, some, the, some, it's building. When it hits Libra, for those in the South, they go, wow, it's building, right? But here it's waning for us. It goes down, we get more reflective until we rebirth ourselves. So there's this impulse that comes every year. So I'm gonna be looking at the um, chart of summer solstice, right? So you see where that sun was at the Tropic of Cancer. We're gonna look at what was the, the imprint coming in at that moment. And then I'm gonna look at that chart, comparing it to the new moon in Aries when that first impulse of the sine wave came through for this year. And we're gonna see how they are relating to each other. Isn't that a cool map? I'll, I'll share it in the group. So if you wanna download it, isn't that cool? So think of the sun giving us life through these impulses, these waves moving through our bodies, our spirits, our minds, our feelings. And we want to capture what is the magnetic energy or the consciousness of this particular wave going through it in 2022, which is a year of the six, the year of the lovers cards. We really want to like bring in some ancient wisdom and give it a modern twist um, by just understanding it with this consciousness. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at summer solstice chart. All right, so this is astro.com. You can make free charts. I mean, an event chart when the sun hits zero degrees cancer. Hey, Melanie, welcome. So nice. Cheers. I made my virgin mojito in your honor. <laughs> Melanie knows where to get the best mojitos in the Bay Area. <laughs> this one does not have any uh, rum. Just club soda, <laughs> mint and lime. All right, now I didn't do any simple syrup. I could have, but I didn't. <laughs> okay, so here in the West Coast, we uh, experience the sun. Here's, let's find the sun right here. Moving into the sign of cancer, looks like the six and the nine, zero degrees, zero minutes. Boom, hit the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, here in, the, in Alameda, the West Coast, it was 2.14 a.m. this morning. Um, if you live in the East Coast, it would have been 5 14 a.m so right around right before sunrise for y'all okay so now we've got an imprint of what was building what was coming to a zenith point from our new moon in aries and i'll direct you back to my website 
where I wrote a blog post, Aries New Moon. So if you want to review what was the messaging and the wisdom, you can go, I'll post the link here, but you can go to lunarlays.com, I hit, go to resources, click blog, and then I go to archives on the side, and it was in March, March 31st, 11 degrees Aries, and our Sabian symbol for the year is wild geese in formation, flying in formation. So this is birds of feather flock together. Oh my God, Melanie, I could not sleep either last night. I had actually was dreaming that I couldn't sleep. So I, I woke up going, was I really not sleeping or was I dreaming that I was not sleeping? But anyway, I was tired. <laughs> Hi, Bianca. Welcome. We got our neighbors here. Totally. So we're going to come back to the wisdom for this 2022 year, which is about humanity uniting, coming together. Who's your tribe? Who are your friends? Who are the people you can be completely yourself with? Where do you have a voice, right? Where are you a leader in a group, right? And like for Nancy, she's got it going on. She's, she is a leader in her group. So awesome. <laughs> so talk to Nancy, get on in her master uh, class she's offering too. And I got to check in the messages. I've been lazy about that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So sun, zero degrees, cancer. Now the Sabian symbol is about uh, a ship lowering one flag, raising another. So this is about a changing of an, of an emotional uh, like value system. You're, you're really being guided to check in to your heart. Now, cancer rules the breasts and the stomach, meaning the nurturing energy. So check into what is nurturing you. What are you nurturing, right? Like if you're a mother, cancer rules mother, childhood, our childhood homes, our family, our ancestral roots. So, you know, who was the big nurturer in your family? Um, are if you're a mother, are you you know you nurturing your child? Where what's that relationship like? Who's nurturing you? Right? Are you allowing enough nurturing to come in? Are you nurturing yourself? Cancer really is about the the best way to nurture or learn how to nurture is to learn how to nurture yourself. Um, if you're not nurturing yourself, um, you really can't get very far in the depths of your soul's embodiment. For this life. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the moon, and this is where the lover's energy was coming in. So the moon is here at three degrees Aries, conjunct Jupiter at six degrees. So we have uh, yes, uh, Monday was yesterday, the third quarter lunar week began for that Gemini lunar cycle, right? So we're going to head into the new moon in cancer on june 28th right so the moon is here in square to the sun third quarter reflective going in returning home doing less being more quiet more introspective hey Teresa, welcome oh i hope you had a wonderful live woohoo getting all the peeps scammed up on summer solstice <laughs> So the moon is making her way back, which will be a new moon uh, in Cancer at seven degrees. It's going to be conjunct the black moon Lilith. Woo, our shadow work. <laughs> we love the black moon because she's all, come over here and look into the darkness of your own shadow emotions. Don't abandon yourself. It's okay. It's to look there. That's where the, the gold is hiding behind the shadow. And uh, Black Moon Lilith in Cancer is about abandonment. So if we're talking about self-nurturing and looking at if we're not being nurturing to ourselves, when did we start to abandon that? Because as children, we learn really early to take care of ourselves. And we love taking care of ourselves. There's usually an adult or some outside force that says, stop doing that. You're wrong. So the innocent child goes, oh, I want all I want is to be loved. And then if they're mad at me, they're not loving me. Therefore, I better change who I am. 
And then that starts the ball rolling. <laughs> and then we like, oh, 40 years later, we're in therapy trying to figure out what's wrong. <laughs> That's okay. We just pay attention to the stars, the sun, the moon, and we'll find our way back home to within. Okay, so the moon here is three degrees Aries. Aries, about the self nurturing the self so how are we going to nurture the self so i i go to my sabian symbols who i love and three degrees aries happens to be my own natal chiron degree so the moon is right on my chiron so i know what's happening for me this this summer solstice as well as this birthday year is about nurturing the inner child yay <laughs> Because I can't have any other relationship in my life if that inner child is not fully re-nurtured, right? And feel safe to come out and play again. Okay, so three degrees Aries is two lovers strolling. And two lovers strolling is about being free to be unself-conscious of your own pursuit of selfish pleasure, meaning so selfish pleasure meaning like really do what you love this is a called a path to joy it's only outside forces when we're little that tell us it's wrong and then we deny it and then we get sad and then we get so sad we get mad <laughs> right and so then we got to get rid of the mads and the sads and get back to the glads okay so two lovers strolling reminded me of the lovers major arcana card as well as the two of cups now i'm bringing in the two of cups because when i looked at the sabian symbol for jupiter in aries expanding this energy of pursue your selfish pleasures meaning love yourself it it, it is a, a pure path of personal joy you know and remember like you know i like the hippocratic oath don't do no harm right be kind in your pursuit of joy <laughs> but uh jupiter was a person in two realms and so what this reminded me i'm gonna stop the share for a minute this reminded me of the two of cups because cups are about love and we have two lovers strolling being guided by um Archangel Raphael wanting to heal the lovers, the inner masculine, the inner feminine, because we have the inner feminine tempted, right? Or the Kundalini energy that's been made to be wrong. And then we have the apples growing and the, you know, the, the logic and the, the growth energy of the inner masculine. We need them both. She has the apple tree. He's got the tree that's growing, right? She's already fully developed. He's the one that needs development, right? The inner masculine. The inner feminine was here a long time. The inner masculine is something new. And you'll learn that when we look at um, early, early goddess studies, it was a lot about being parthogenetic, meaning one gender, and it was female, XX. Something happened. And we got the XY. <laughs> but thank goodness, it makes it nice, doesn't it? Two genders. And now, as we move into the age of gold, there's lots of topic about gender. It's interesting. So you kind of want to really feel into those issues around gender. But this is saying fully developed feminine. This is growing. It's new, something new. So contemplate that. And Jupiter says, a person existing in two realms, meaning two. So we have the two of cups, lovers. And this is a two, all the twos in the tarot about um, decisions and choices. So here we have two choices, two lovers coming together and making a toast, right? What are they choosing? And we have the Kundalini, the Mercury, we have lion and we've seen the lion leo with wings who's this person with wings right these cards are very much connected two and six right one's major arcana one is a choice 
What do you choose? This one? Are you going to choose this or choose something else? Now, Jupiter says, in your choice, living these two realms, live the path you choose by your own free will, right? Are you living the path of your choosing or do you feel you're living somebody else's life? Doing, you know, things that you might please other people or you just want to go along to get along. And it's like, no, this is about uh, your selfish per pursuit of pleasure, being totally unselfconscious and let yourself be on the path to joy. <laughs> right, got to look adoringly into your own eyes. This is reconciling in a lot of ways reconciling i wish the light would be better um the inner masculine and the inner feminine so that we can have healing okay. all right now the other twos in the tarot two of pentacles they're always about choices and balance two of wands your spiritual path and domination of the world <laughs> Choices around money and spirit, calming the emotional water so that you have balance in the material world. And then two of swords. Mental, I, I can't decide. My mind is blocked. I have to be blind to see the choices, to feel the choices that I need to make. So that's just a little fun tarot lesson in regards to the chart. Let's go back. <laughs> Kind of fun, huh? All right, I geek out on this stuff. <laughs> okay, so now we know it's two lovers strolling. We have a person existing in two realms. So I'm thinking, you know, they are, you know, the the lover within reconciling inner masculine, inner feminine. Jupiter's growing and expanding this um, this choice point to live your life of your choosing to uh, really be about your own free will when making choices for yourself. The moon saying at your core, be unselfish or be, you know, don't be self-conscious about what brings you pleasure. Like really allow yourself to pursue that, to find what it is in its purest sense because that's a path to joy. Okay, so we know that this is summer solstice and that means all things cancer. So then we go into, or I go into the planets in currently in cancer right now. We have the black moon Lilith who we're gonna do, take a deep dive because this is the new moon degree. The sun will conjunct the black moon on June 28th at seven degrees. This is Ceres, the great mother asteroid, the divine, goddess of the grain, the mother that nurtures us. 15 degrees cancer, the midpoint, really powerful degree. Then we have the part of fortune, doing our sacred work on the planet, our dharma. And if you pursue the path of joy, that is also part of your dharma, meaning doing your sacred work. Now, at, uh, in seven days, when the new moon happens, and that's an activation time of from the new moon in Cancer to the new moon in Libra, it's an activation time of the zodiac year 2022. This is where we get busy, we don't slow down, we get going. That's why I couldn't do the live yesterday because I got so busy in the garden. <laughs> I didn't slow down until I passed out. <laughs> I mean, a little dramatic, but. I was tired and I was all dirty. I had like plants and weeds in my hair. I had this, my, <laughs> my face, my body was dirty. I didn't smell too good, I was sweaty. <laughs> it was great. I love that kind of stuff. So now this time summer is time for action. So we're gonna take action on the wisdom. Remember of that impulse coming through March 31st, when we had the new moon in Aries. Okay, so the Sabian symbol for seven degrees is a really cool symbol. It kind of reminds me of some children's books. I really love really well done illustrated children's books. 
<laughs> dramatic and cancer, right? We're like, it's the Goldilocks disease. No, the bed's too hard. The bed's too soft. It's too cold. It's too warm. It has to be just right. Uh, did you ever read those uh, books? I think they were um, Amelia Bedelia books where everything, or no, it was Madeline. Madeline, the little French girl. And something's not quite right. <laughs> she was my hero. <laughs> um, so the saving symbol is rabbits. Now remember, going back to Letha real quick. Letha is a fertility goddess. She's pregnant, meaning I'm fertile. Rabbits, a goddess symbol of fertility. <laughs> so we got fertile energy here. All right. So rabbits dressed in fine clothes on parade, right? And if you're in the Bay Area, we had a big old parade yesterday for the Golden State Warriors. It was awesome. People are going crazy. And then this weekend, we got the Gay Pride Parade, and people are going to be dolled up and, you know, they're going to be showing off their fine clothes. <laughs> All the drag queens are going to be out and about. I used to have a, a good friend. Um, he did. He was a big pink Marie Antoinette. Oh, he loved it. That was, his drag name was Free to Be. <laughs> Free to Be You and Me. Maybe he's doing drag this year. I don't know. I have to find out. So the rabbits, this is about um, uh, awakening the unrealized self. So this is what's coming. This is a little preview for um, uh, the new moon in Cancer. But it is uh, awakening the unrealized self. Now, summer solstice is saying it's going to happen by nurturing yourself. Being uh, selfish or the pursuit of selfish pleasure, a path to joy. Right. So an un, so awaken the unrealized self. And how do we do that? The black moon is saying, look into that dark mirror of the shadow and imagine yourself up. It says, what are your highest ideals? Uh, level up your thoughts and feelings to match those ideals. And remember, you are worthy of these ideals. So start tuning in this week. What are my highest ideals? That's a question we're going to ask ourselves. I'm going to put it here in the chat. What are my highest ideals? Make your list. <laughs> um, because you're going to, once you discover what that is, you're going to then go, okay, how do my thoughts and my feelings need to shift to match those ideals? Because Cancer time, meaning how do you feel? That's the mantra of cancer. I feel. That's why Melanie and I were cracking up that cancers are very dramatic because we feel everything. And so we make things bigger than <laughs> that doesn't feel good. Does it feel right? What feels good? So you got to level up your thoughts, the way your mind works and your feelings, right? What do you want to feel into? Uh, imagine up, be, wear those fine clothes. Don't wait for tomorrow. Put something awesome on. Who are you? Who are you? Who is your real life self? That is what wants to awaken. Now, Ceres is here at 15 degrees and she's got something to say. She wants to tell you to reach for your goals with a clear vision. Reach for your goals. <laughs> Do not hold back. Big mama, her message is reach for those goals. And those goals are those highest ideals, right? Especially when you're looking in the mirror and you're liking everything. Even if you don't like what you see, it's okay. You still love. Love yourself, nurture yourself. Pursue your joys, your pleasures. Now, the part of fortune says 22. What year are we in? 2022. I like in the 22 here. <laughs> So this is about group energy helps you form your personal identity. And let's go back to the, the new moon in Aries that started the impulse wave. Birds of a feather flock together. What groups are you a part of? We know we've got a group going on right here. We love our lunar ladies. 
We love our groups. Teresa's got a podcast. She's got a group going on, doing lives. Nancy's got an amazing, huge community. And now she's going to teach you how to create a beautiful six-figure business community online. Like, get her done. Let's do it. <laughs> so that's how they're starting to speak. All the symbols are starting to speak together. Okay. Now notice this green line here. Green, coming into the sun, Pluto, and who likes Pluto but the black moon? <laughs> She's like, hey, <laughs> come over here, Pluto, I got a job for you. And Pluto is the power to transform. So Pluto is sending in a yod or a, a finger of God or a lightning bolt into the sun, how you shine your light into the world. And he's moving, notice he's 28 degrees, zero minutes. He's just about, and he's going backwards. He's just about to go to the USA <laughs> Pluto point. So we say, welcome back. We've been doing some good work, working on ourselves as a united humanity. And what a best place to practice being a united humanity is America, melting pot country. Everybody's welcome here. Give me your tired, your poor. Come on over. And then we might step back and go, well, are we really doing that? Are those just words on a statue now? Uh, so one of the biggest things that we could do as a people is stop taking sides right now. End that today, tonight, tomorrow. If you're taking sides and pointing fingers, forget about it. <laughs> Got to go Sopranos on this. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not helping. It's not uh, helping make a shift, a change to the age of gold. You got to look at both sides and go, you know what? I like a little bit about both sides. I don't like a little bit about both sides. Cool. We're not enemies. Let's, let's celebrate our differences. Let's work together. Right, reach across the aisles, but none of this left, right, back, forth, up, down. It's exhausting already. That does not match the, the sine wave impulse coming through on the planet, which is saying, who's your tribe? Who's the birds that you, you know, you're flying with together in formation where everybody takes a lead and everybody takes the time to follow. And so, Pluto is moving back over this summer to the Sabian symbol of a large Avery. So now we've got two bird symbols, the wild geese in formation and the large Avery, which is a large housing unit for birds. And this is about looking at the good of the group, the good of the group, which is very Aquarius energy. And so we're going to take that wisdom and start applying it to how do we become a self-realized, uh, awakened self with an integrated inner masculine and inner feminine, the lover within. This is how we're going to do it. <laughs> Ta-da! This is called a synastry chart, looking at two charts and trying to understand what's the relationship I know you can't make this stuff up. This is why I'm drinking my club sodas. I refuse to do it the alcohol because it does. I want to clear mine. I want to like really get this. <laughs> okay, so this nastry I'm looking at the inside is in blue is summer solstice. That the chart we just looked at. Outside in red is the Aries new moon, which we're really going to dive into next week. Um, when we have the new moon in Cancer, but this is the previews for what's coming. So when, when you're learning how to read a synastry charts, a good place to start is just to see where we have lineups, meaning conjunctions, right? Those are about creating cycles, new cycles. So one of the first ones I noticed was Venus at the time of the new moon was 20, and you can look over here, Venus, 25 degrees Aquarius. Who is 25 degrees Aquarius right now? Saturn retrograde. <laughs> so here's a cycle that is getting started. 
from the summer solstice today around Venus and Saturn working together. Now, Venus is up for us because we're working on the inner lovers, right? The, the, and that's a Venus job. She takes uh, precedence or leadership in that space. So 25th degree of Aquarius, where we have old Venus from the new moon in Aries with today's Saturn retrograde is the hydrometer, which is measuring emotional energy. <laughs> Where's your emotional energy in regards to Venus? Love and community. Saturn, let's build some structures around this love and community. <laughs> if we don't, from our good, from our own free will and following the path of our choosing, we're going to default into the rules by outside forces that are not being rooted in value and love for one another. They're being rooted in division and separation and inspiring hatred for one another. So we're like, oh, hell no. Big Mama said not on my watch. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. Because look who else is hanging out here, but Juno. I want to marry these forces. Come into sacred union, right? The lover's card with Archangel Raphael overseeing this. Okay, so the next conjunction we have that I discovered was over here. The, the new moon, or I'm sorry, the north node in Taurus on the new moon in Aries is conjunct or right near Pallas Athena, goddess of wisdom. And uh, Athena is kind of a, is an archetypal uh, daughter of Saturn, meaning uh, I come from, I'm birthed from the consciousness of wisdom and logic. She's a goddess, she's feminine. So they are at 23 degrees exact Taurus. This forms a big red line, a square. Now, I don't know if you went into, um, let me go over to here to Facebook, but I posted a, a, a really cool share from Susan Garcia. I love her shares. Um, let's go to lifestyle. But this is the embodiment of uh, what we're talking about right now. Uh, where is she? Here. I stopped looking for the light, meaning outside myself, and I decided to become it instead by that, by today, meaning I live in two realms. I live the life of my choosing and I take my own free will to live it. I don't look for the light outside myself. And I look for the, I become the light instead from within, right? I awaken my unrealized self. I come out and then take a leadership role in the community. I may be in the formation that I'm flying. I'm now going to the head, going to the head. And that was another thing of, um, of Pluto changing signs or changing degree rather, is you're guided to take a leadership role, a leadership role. I'm looking to see who was the one who wanted to do that. Oh yeah. Oh, that's where I am right now. <laughs> Looking at my notes in the dark here. Um, 23 degrees, Taurus. This is a Sabian symbol of an, a, a Native American person, a warrior mounted on his horse, scalps hanging from the side, meaning he's game on. He's not fooling around. He's already got scalps. He's on a mission, right? And the mission is to, you know, either protect the land, protect the tribe. But what we gather from this is, this is about the conquest of the lower self, the lower mind, the, the one who feels not deserving, the one that doesn't feel good enough. We have to conquest that lower self that feels less than, because that is what's driving and continuing this world of lack and limitation is coming from that deep rooted fear that we are not enough. But if we wake up and realize our potential and know that we are not only enough, but more than enough and amazing, then things start to change, strength in numbers. 
And so the conquest of the lower self leads to the mastery and the power of your own command, which echoes Jupiter that says, by your own free will, live the life of your choosing. Forget these outside sources coming in and trying to tell you how to think, how to feel, how to act, how to, what, what to do. Don't even play that game anymore. It's full of illusion. We don't know, you know, one person says this, another person says this. The truth is somewhere lost in the middle. That's all I can say. So don't even bother with the game. It's so convoluted, so many, you know, uh, tentacles to that uh, emotional monster. You just have to walk away for a minute and go regain your own sense of self, your own path of joy, right? Okay, so the next, the third big thing that I found um, from this nasty chart. So we want, so where we're evolving this year is taking the bull by the horns and really conquest of the lower self through wisdom, feminine wisdom, feminine logic and intuition in balance, right? That inner masculine, inner feminine. So the other cool thing I discovered was Mars. Mars is, especially as we are looking for balance, because we've been talking about the goddess energy through Venus and Pallas Athena, Mars is the balance point, right? And he loves, he's the lover of Venus. So he's like, ooh, come and get me, <laughs> I'm waiting here. <laughs> so Mars during, the new moon in Aries, and he rules Aries, he rules this impulse wave that comes through, was 19 degrees Aquarius, and it's a big white dove of bears a message. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, what's the message? We're getting the message. We've got it already downloaded here on Midsummer's Night. So he is coming in in sextile, he's now 20 degrees Aries in his home sign. So what they call the domicile. He's in dignity. He's ruling in his own sign. He's happy. And he's got this synergy from his old self back on the new moon in Aries. And the Sabian symbol today for him is a boxer entering a ring. So think about it. A boxer is entering the ring. He's not coming in, not knowing what he, he's got a game plan, right? He's trained. He's won fights. He knows how to fight. He, he's got a plan. He's going to win, right? So that's the vibration that Mars is offering. And so his message is that conflict provides the grit. Remember, like when you are sanding something, sanding wood, right? <laughs> Ferdinand, the bull, that's right. So Say you're sanding something and it's all rough and splinters, but you get that sandpaper with like, you know, 20 grit or whatever, and you sand it. And then it's smooth like butter and it's so warm and beautiful, right? And then you paint it or shellac it or varnish it. It's so beautiful, but it wasn't very beautiful before. It was all rough and you know, could hurt people and dangerous. But we took the grit from the sandpaper and we worked it back and forth. And then it was smooth and beautiful. So Mars is telling us, hey, conflict is okay. It's what you do with the conflict that bears the goodness or the trouble. So conflict, if you have conflict in your life or seeing conflict in the world, it's offering the world grit to grow stronger and more beautiful and more empowered so we can take like you, you know what we're being told is happening in ukraine a lot of ways it's the grit and conflict there has you know helped a lot of countries come together to help people they open their homes for refugees they really are you know wanting and feeling and praying and trying to do what they can to help that's growing a stronger humanity from that conflict, riding the grit, and we're working together and things, you know, have opportunities to get better. So we can look at any number of situations and where is the conflict? Look for the grit. What's the grit that's going to be here that's making us stronger? So what do you think? What do you think? This is what's happening right now. 
This is the wisdom to take into the night, into your sacred cauldron, your sacred dreams. And let's review. We are here as two lovers strolling, the inner lover, being unselfconscious in our pursuit of selfish pleasure, which is our path to joy. We are existing in two realms. So take your free will and live the path of your choosing, right? Awaken the unrealized self, imagine up by having, a, having these higher ideals and leveling up your thoughts and your feelings to match them and knowing that you're worthy to have these, to be these ideals, live these ideals. Let's see, did you happen to notice that? Yes, Teresa, thank you. Yes, I did notice that. I was like, ooh, devil. We're getting a second time to do, and the moon, the third quarter moon, I believe is the martyr's moon. Is it not, Melanie? What's the third, or is it the moon of lost souls? So Teresa says, the third quarter moon in Pisces at 29 degrees, the second time the same sign. Yes, it was that way in the Aries new, uh, the Taurus lunar cycle. Uh, third quarter moon was also May 22nd when you be Pisces. Yes, or the bandwidth of Pisces. It kind of reflects the Piscean age itself as we move to the Aquarius age. A lot of reviewing, reflecting, collective subconscious. You got it, girl. Very astute, Teresa. I love it. Moon of lost souls. All right, so the moon of lost souls back twice. Looking at the collective unconscious. Remember last week, we talked a lot about Neptune. And remember the Sagittarius full moon was a T-square to Neptune. Neptune rules Pisces. We've got two Pisces lunar, third quarter lunar weeks. That uh, One started at one degree, one starts at 29. So it's a full bandwidth of Pisces. So we look to, let me just double check that. Neptune, 20. Oh, it's still 25. There were 25 Pisces both times. 25 Pisces, I know, I should know this by now. I've looked at it a gazillion times. Oh, that's right. 25 Pisces is about the new moon divides influences. So again, pointing, it's pointing our attention to this upcoming new moon. The new moon. A new moon that divides its influences. Deeper realizations enable us to get clear about our ultimate motives. Okay, so here, like, I think it's really interesting. Like, we're having the January 6th. Like, why are they bringing, you know, I would, I listened to like maybe three minutes. <laughs> so I could take, because Adam Schiff was there and I just don't like his mouth. <laughs> that weird thing to say, I'm like, like your mouth it's kind of but anyway and i'm like he's given this scenario and and i'm like hmm, yeah and i'm like looking at like yeah if you no matter where you are in the situation or how how you feel about it if you listen to it with one understanding yes i could see that but if i listen to it from the other side's understanding i'm like wow i could hear that side too it's just this weird murky Neptunian foggy Maya illusion thing going on. That's why I just turned it off. I'm like, I got better things to do. I got wisdom <laughs> to embody. I've got the lover's card to understand. I've got uh, awakening my unrealized self. I don't have time for this. <laughs> yes, very Neptune. And that's not to, um, dissuade anybody's feelings about what's happening in that regard. But I do caution that we don't get pulled into that uh, the spell work that's happening on both sides of that issue. It's just a very murky, strange, doesn't feel right to me. It makes me feel like very unbalanced when I like sit with it. I'm like, ew. I'd rather go out and plant my, my victory garden. <laughs> I'd rather go, wow, look at the parade of planets before sunrise. Like there's other things happening that are just as important, possibly have more to do with my soul 
<laughs> and our collective soul. So I'd rather look to those and learn than get caught up in the 3D world that's dismantling all in its own. <laughs> but we're here to uh, build our communities, right? And we're flying together in formation towards a, a higher I realized ideal for humanity on the planet. Starts with each one of us taking a leadership role. Conflict is grit that helps us get stronger. Don't take sides. Remember, twos are about choices. What are you choosing? Jupiter saying, hey, just forget all that. Live the life you're choosing by your own free will. Be, feel deserving. Remember, you are worthy of having this. Get out of the lack of self-worth, which is a nightmare for our souls, and tune back into your paths of joy. Right. And that's energy that you do for yourself in that moment like that is for the good of the group will affect humanity positively inspires others to do the same. You'll get energized, you'll get motivated, you'll be able to share what you're experiencing. Um, remember, the Venus Saturn is about a hydrometer, it's measuring your emotional energy. So if you're having a, a down day or not feeling good, or you're things got you down, or you're angry, it's okay, let's go out in nature, go do something with the dogs, with the flowers, with the trees, look up, listen for the birds, whatever you gotta do, drink, stay hydrated. But this is a time to get busy, right? It's summer, remember we got the sun card, it's joy, sun card, happiness, yay! Right? Look at those sunflowers. Happy dancing. Sun. Everybody's happy. Flowers in our hair. And that's something you can do now through the weekend to celebrate Letha is flower crowns. Uh, bonfires. Safely, of course, especially out here in California. We don't want to cause any fires. <laughs> uh, celebration. Dancing. Making food. Getting together. Calling up your friends. Hey, let's go. Drink some Chardonnay and watch the sunset at uh, Alameda Point. <laughs> right, Melanie? Ah, oh, right. All kinds of fun things happen. And I wanted to just uh, share with you one more thing, just to show you how cool this is. So if you come over here to my sale, courses.lunarladies.com, this course the Decoding Your Natal Astrology course, this one. Let's go here, Astrology course. It's on sale for $99 or two payments of $67.50. So two monthly payments. But this is the information that will uh, teach you how to read the astrology charts. All the things that I'm doing, I did tonight, I'm doing on the Nighttime Astro Lives. It's all there. You got cheat sheets, bonus classes, how to read the ephemeris, discover your natal moon phase. Use the moon dial, uh, the planets, the signs, the houses, the, your energetic signature, chart anatomy. I think it's really powerful. Uh, build your uh, chart wheel. It's really fun. And it's on demand, so you can uh, get it and start today. But this will give you everything you need to know to do this. <laughs> and I'm offering for everybody that buys a course, 25% uh, a uh, coupon for a follow-up one-to-one to go over your experience with the course. Yay! And Melanie, I'm going to send you that coupon because uh, I know you bought the course before and uh, you can have that coupon. <laughs> so I have to remind myself to email you the code. All right. So any questions about summer solstice, feel free to comment. Um, if you have any questions about the courses and the birthday sale, birthday uh, is happening now through Sunday night at midnight. And it's the three courses, Living a Lunar Lifestyle, Tuning Forks for Star Seeds, and Decoding Your Natal Chart. I do have Tuning Forks in stock right now. I haven't scheduled the next Tuning Fork workshop yet. Uh, Teresa, I'll let you know. <laughs> And uh, if you're interested in becoming a sound healing practitioner and opening your own business as a sound healer, uh, I have my 
practitioners course certified gets you going helps you with your um with your business and becoming an amazing sound healer so cool so all that's available here for the birthday sale use coupon code shan bd 2022 so like if you go and say yes i want to buy that it'll say have a coupon and that's where you put the code in and it gives you the 99 dollars price and then if you miss the sale i will have the still on sale but at uh not at this discounted price but still a good price so that'll happen through july 4th to celebrate our nation's birthday yay all right so take this wisdom into your summer solstice longest day of the year uh you know you're gonna have to wait a little bit for sunset <laughs> shortest night so go meet your dream guides ask for assistance of course use your oracle cards um if you need a one-to-one -one reading especially if you're looking at the lover's energy we can take a look at that for you see what's happening or provide some deeper insights into what that uh could mean right now in your life it's very interesting things are changing at lightning speed so we got to keep our our mindset of continuing to grow and expand and remember it's about your highest ideals for your life imagine up um and just if you're having resistance come in or feeling that the grip of, of sadness around that just explore that with the black moon lilith on the upcoming new moon in cancer on june 28th all right thank you so much for joining live it's been so fun i'll be back Let's see what what's what's going on. I'm gonna probably be back. Uh, maybe what's tomorrow? I'll post it. But we've got some good um, things happening here. Oh, Venus in the Gemini. I definitely want to do that one. That's on six twenty two. So that is tomorrow. I'm gonna to be back again tomorrow night for Venus in Gemini uh, to pick up on the lovers' conversation. Isn't that cool. All right, you're so welcome. Thank you for joining and thanks for watching the replay. Bye for now.